So, round four of the Guernsey Carlton Championship. As you can see, it's pretty damp. Um, all on wet tyres, trying to get as much heat in the tyres as possible. Starting P3 for heat one, just behind Josh there. Not a great start, nicely at the curb, but just, just down the inside of Dale there. And tuck behind the number 44. Trying to find the grip. Get the head, and there's slightly wider line, not really working for me. Dropped back as a result of that behind the number 44, but I'm still caught up a bit there as he's made a quick mistake on the exit Devils. To press box, no grip at all. Really got to hit that curve there, or you just have no exit speed. Again, just arching it back there. Yeah, the other twin, right down the inside there. I knew it was behind me, it's just inevitable. Him making the move. Just slightly deep there, Lars got past me. Our bumpers got a bit stuck, left me no room there. Um, and it's Dale's managed to get past. And basically, if you mess up the hairpin, you've got absolutely no power at all until you press box. So it's once and past me there as well. Another driver, but still very fast. Just makes a mistake, they're trying to go up the inside, but not really enough space. Getting quite frustrated here, trying to push, get past as quick as possible, because I need to really push up into those top four positions, but unfortunately, it wasn't really going well for me here. Trying to be as neat as tight as possible, trying to scrub as little speed. Um, but yeah, still no grip press box at all, and it looks like the Hulebeck spun there. So what's left with no space, and he also spins. It's uh, pretty convenient for me. Skip step 10, up into P5 now. Not really anyone ahead of me, kind of by myself. Um, which isn't always a bad thing, it's a bit of a boring race for by myself, but... First race of the day, getting used to conditions, it's not a, always a bad thing, slightly wide there. Trying to break his legs as possible. Slightly wide, just onto the edge of the tarmac. Instead, we're starting to find the grip here. Starting to go well, but just on the outside, touching the, the you know, rubber there. That was a tricky one in the wet. Because the ideal racing line is always very rubbered up. You can't really go off it that well with the wet, and just way too wide there. Marries, you really need to be on that curb. You've got absolutely no exit speed. You really need that exit speed to get you into the hairpin. Neat and tidy there, starting to get the hang of it now. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty boring race in the end. Apart from the first couple of laps, but yeah, just a uh, nice, nice result. Not bad. Be falling better, but we, yeah, not bad. So yeah, I actually thought I was P3 here because of all the crashes and stuff. Um, I wasn't really sure, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, I thought it was P3, and I was P5 in the end, but uh, that was a good penalty after the first lap. On T2, starting P3 again here. Strict luck there. Um, this is probably my best race of the day. I think I just really made good work. They did straight down the inside of Riley there. I knew I was going to be the move pretty early on, but maybe not quite that early on. And then straight down the inside of Nile. I sort of surprised myself here because I wasn't really going for the move, and I just thought, you know what, I'll go for the move. Straight down the inside into P1 now. I believe this is my first time in my career that I actually got into P1 without starting on pole. So that's, uh, that felt pretty good, but now just trying to drive at the front of the pack as, as well as I possibly can. Try and maybe pull away so I can at least secure myself P2. If not P1, if that's possible. Nice and neat to happen there. Bit of a stir on the exit. Trying to pull away as much as I can. Into Devils, difficult to get right in the wet, as I said. If you can get it right, then you're uh, set. You see the Hoover go past that. I did lift off a bit there to let him pass, but otherwise I would have been squeezed into the uh, into the grandstand. Right back down the inside there. Great exit out of press box after letting him pass there. Surprised himself a bit there, but he uh, he left the door open and I thought, you know what, I might as well go for it. Tried to give the switch back there, but couldn't quite make it work. The move from him was inevitable, so uh, it was nice to be able to defend a little bit, but can't quite keep it there. And yeah, the pace from Archie that morning was absolutely incredible, so he's already putting away quite nicely. On the curb there, it's so vital that you get that curb at press box. Same with Mary's here, you see, we both miss it and we've got no exit speed. So I believe behind me at this point was uh, Josh, number 27. Uh, ooh, way too deep there. Um, and he was squabbling quite a lot with Alfie, number 44. And uh, yeah, I think I managed to just drive fast enough that they just dropped back and I ended up actually winning 
Oh, really? I'm coming second by 10 seconds there. Which was uh, pretty unbelievable when I saw the times. But yeah, this was a good race. Just really consistent. I was, yeah. It was a perfect race for me. A few compliments saying how uh, much of a great drive it was. Just really neat and tidy. I think that was uh, a really great race. Again, pretty boring race. But, yeah. And it's the most boring races that the best results so cutting right up to p8 here because it was lap 8 sorry because it's a pretty boring race this is position um it's lap 8 the back marker there he had a bit of a tough morning his wet tires were very old wet tires and they didn't have any wet tires in stock so he had to be on very bald wet tires and he had no grip at all um i'll be proud here one of my mates so it's really great for him let me pass there Still not for position, blue flag, but yeah. There are only two blue flags, which is firstly surprised me, it's quite annoying as well, because if you are trying to lap someone and they don't know you're there, it's, it can be really annoying and you end up losing positions for it. Generally I'm quite good at getting past back markers quite fast, so place my advantage, but yeah, sometimes it's annoying that they don't do black flag, uh, blue flags. But, uh, yeah, it's just something that they could maybe do in the future. So yeah, just cruising now, lap 10. Kicking back up to lap 12 because this was a uh, after like three laps, pretty boring race. Oh, I'm up there. Actually, I got investigated by the scrutineers there. The scrutineers, um, Marshall's there pulling my arm up before I crossed the line. And apparently, he said dangerous driving, which I was a bit annoyed about, but so I didn't get any sort of penalty for it. So now you can see it's getting quite dry. The decision was the safe option was to stay on wets, but we decided to go on dry to gamble for it. And I'm glad I went for the gamble. Um, didn't pay off in the end, but I still think it's going to go for it. Down the inside there, no, on the outside, I've got absolutely no grip on slicks. Um, really within the right decision to go on wets, but at the end of the day, something it doesn't really matter. Because I still managed to, I started P7 and I think in the end I finished P7, so that's frustrating not to be able to move up the field, because you know, P7 is not a great position for me at all. Um, yeah, it's. I, I think it's very easy to say, oh, I really regret going for the gamble. But if the gamble paid off and I won by five seconds because the slicks were so much faster than wets, then I wouldn't be saying I regret going for the gamble. I think it was a good idea to gamble for it. I'm just unlucky that it didn't pay off for me. Um, so yeah, passed by Casey there, which was frustrating. But yeah, lap three again. Try. No grip at press box at all, so it's just trying to find the grip where there isn't really much grip. Things that happened, there was quite a little grip though, so I was able to get a pretty good exit. See, so catching the exit there. Single devils, completely dry devils. Straight's like slippery because the grandstand there just keeps all the water there. P7 still. Not really happy with that result, and uh, yeah, just getting a bit frustrated. Might be able to see with my driving style. Really, really starting to go for it now because I need to catch Casey. I wouldn't be very happy at all if I didn't manage to get past it. And also, obviously, your heat, your three heat positions determine your starting position for the final. So it was pretty important that I I got um, a pretty good position here. But unfortunately, just the slicks didn't pay off. Casey in front on wets. Starting to catch up at the end of the session, did start to dry up a bit. I ended up only being about my fastest lap, which was I think my last lap. I was only, I think, five tenths faster than the leaders. Five tenths slower, sorry, obviously. Yeah. And Casey go tried to go for moving Ollie there, backs out of it, I'll go straight down the inside. He must be kicking himself there. Trying to get on the inside there, not really working. Um, just go a bit deep there, sort of the world. And then here, spinning again. I have to avoid him, Casey is straight into him, pass my Swanson. That was really frustrating there. Wasn't happy about that. Because I would have been able to be possibly even P5. So, yeah, really not great. But. P7 in the end, it was not that much difference. It wasn't that much difference. So frustrating. 
I did try and catch up to Henry Swanson in front, but as the gap's just huge. And I've only got four laps. Onto the last lap there, just skip there. Get lapped even. Absolutely atrocious race, but yeah, nothing I can really do about that there. Onto the final then. And somehow I ended up starting P6, even though I think I should have probably started up fourth uh, by my calculations, but I was obviously wrong. Push wide by Niall there, which I was a bit annoyed about. Let's see, I'm trying to find a way past him here down the inside. Doesn't quite work, get blocked by Dale around the outside, and losing no space at all. Squeeze out onto the grass. Um, again, just no space given there. A bit frustrated about that. Cost me position, probably, but at the end of the day, Niall did seem to be a bit faster that heat, so that final, sorry. So I'm not overly bothered, and he did help me. Um, help me in the end, so you can see. Not really pushing as much as I probably should have at this point. Um, but there wasn't really much need to push, I was sort of hanging with now nicely. The GoPro does make it look like I'm a lot farther back than I actually am. I'm uh, only about half a second behind there, but because the GoPro like, ultra wide lens, it makes it look pretty far behind. If you look at where he is on track, actually, compared to me, I'm not that far behind. So yeah, just sort of, I'm sort of hoping now that Noel's going to get past Dale, and uh, then two past 84, as the Hulebeck crashes out there, which I really benefits from after P5. He had uh, not a great morning to all there, Archie. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, hoping for 92 to get past the 84, so that then I can get past the 84 and get fourth. And then hopefully pass Nile as well, 92, to get on the podium. That would have been a really nice end of the weekend podium. Obviously, but yeah, just trying to keep it really nice there, scrubbing no speed at all, so that I'm actually pretty close there. Just makes it look quite far away, but yeah, trying to stay close. If something does happen, if one of them does spin, whatever, or they have a bit of come together, I can nip past and uh, pick up the pieces. Neat and tidy there through hairpin. Devil's starting to dry out now, so you can take the proper nice, proper uh, dry line. Still straight, very wet there, big wet patches. Press box still not all that much grip, skipping to lap 12. I think I did actually mess up the lap numbers at the start there. So they said uh, there are only 12 laps in the race, but after 15. As Nar goes to the inside, Dale on the outside gets touched, I think, loses all the pace, and I'm straight past. And then Nar, so now I realise I actually have a chance at getting the podium here. So I'm pushing like an absolute madman, trying to catch up to Niall. But I. Uh, yeah, yeah. Really trying to push. See, so, yeah, getting the cut. It's like sideways on the entry to the happen there, breaking. Just really trying to push as hard as I can. Onto lap 14 now. Really trying to push. Onto the final lap now, and I'm seeing I haven't really caught up anywhere near enough. Caught up, just not enough. Really pushing here, barely even breaking into Maris. Hard on the brakes. And you see actually my NASA panel has come loose there. Uh, we had a problem with it, we had to weld it back on. And it looks like it's come loose, like, loose again. I hit a uh, curb press box quite hard and it came off. Not the end of the world, get it welded again. And I haven't quite got the pace to get past Niall. But at the end of the day, if anyone was going to beat me to the podium, I'm glad it was Niall. It's the first podium in juniors. And yeah, he sees, he's looking back hoping that I'm not Dale. Because he's in the, uh, the Hulebeck team. And their main opponent's the Sodi team. And he's quite glad they gave me the thumbs up. Glad that I'm um, ahead of Dale there. Bit of a power slide, shows he's happy. Arm up, slowing down, and that was the end to round four. Hope you enjoyed.